like my sister's little beaver scout. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yes, of course. I love little beavers. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show and wide open telephones on this Friday at 1-800-5800-TOM. It's 1-800-5800-866. Anything goes. It's Kevin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. Hey. Hey, I wanted to tell you my theory on Tom Likas. Oh, no, I'm sorry, on Barack Obama. All right, this is going to be a very bad crank call, folks. No, 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 no. This is an amateur. I have a a theory on him. I think that he might be the Antichrist. The Antichrist. Yeah, doesn't the Bible say that the Antichrist will come a a wolf in sheep's clothing? Doesn't it say that everyone will love him? Yeah, well, you could say the same thing about Jesus Christ. Well, I think the Messiah, if he was coming back, he would be a little bit different. I think that he would do it a little bit more lowbrow. Lowbrow? <laughs> uh, yeah, as opposed to what the elites, what those elites like. Uh, what, what do you mean elites? Well, ask Sarah Palin. She used that word a lot, the elites. Oh, I'm sure she's kind of some kind of devil. The elites mean somebody who reads the newspaper. Oh, all right. Elites. That wouldn't be me. By the way, don't you love the way the uh, Bacane people now are taking out their knives and stabbing Sarah Palin in the back? I think it's fantastic. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. What a pleasure. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's Calvin on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Tom. What's up? Uh, your speakerphone. You got to pick up the phone. <laughs> hey, no worries, no worries, no worries. Now the yeah. speakerphone sounds terrible. You got to pick it up. All right, no worries, no worries. No, no, no. All right, I tell you what, we'll put you back with Dean until he's going to tell you how to pick up the phone, and then when you do, we're going to come back to you. Dre on the Tom Likas show. Hello. What's going on, Tom? I'm a uh, long time listener, first time caller. Thank you, Dre. Uh, I just want to touch on this guy that called. Well, actually. It was two guys in the female, the Caribbean chick that called. The first guy, he said that, you know, he he called in regards to it being our time. And then he started referencing to it's our time to get off welfare, get out of jail. Well, you know, I believe that he should get his facts straight before he called the show. You know, it's not only black people that's on welfare. It's not only black people that's in prison. We don't make up the whole prison system. So, you know, I mean... Get your facts most of, most of the people who are on welfare are white. That's been true forever. Thank you. That's because you know most I mean? people are white. So, so I mean, so is it? What is he saying? You know, what I mean, was he sneak fighting? Was he trying to make a point that? I mean, because it's not clear to me what he was trying to say. You know, what I mean, because Antonio Viragosa over here in L.A. He got mayor. I heard Mexicans saying the same thing. I heard Hispanics saying the same thing. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. He, they, they was trying to groom him to be the next president, and what he do? He went and cheated on his wife. That's you know right. What I mean? And then the Caribbean the Caribbean chick, look, so you got to stop watching Minister Society, Juice, and Boys in the Hood. Because not every not every black dude is walking around with their pants sagging. You have some educated black young men and women. If she just opened her eyes up, and stop rolling through the hood every once in a while, she would know that. Well, I understand. There's always been a little bit of friction, as far as I can tell, between uh, black people from the Caribbean and uh, African Americans. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was just crazy to me to sit here, you know, in my car. I'm driving to my house in Riverside. I live in the suburbs. Uh huh. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, it was just crazy for me to sit here and hear that. So what? If Obama is black, I don't care. That ain't the reason I voted for him. I don't I think that. I don't think that's the reason most people voted for him because the majority of people who voted for him were white. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, obviously, you know. And I mean, it, it was just crazy. Look, if she if she thought it was going to be a problem voting, you should have voted for McCain. He wasn't going to win anyway. <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, man. <laughs> you know, and it was. And, and, and as far as the other guy, he said that. uh he didn't hear any intelligent calls the other day. I listened for the whole hour. Because i tell you the truth, I don't think he listened for the whole hour. Yeah, I think you're right about that. You know, I mean, now, as far as the guy saying, oh, we rubbing your face in it, he was talking about white supremacists. And, you know, I mean, you played it earlier, but <laughs> these dudes need to actually listen for the whole hour. You know, I mean, go get you an old school Walkman, 
And when you get out your car, put your Walkman on so you can actually listen for the whole hour. That's exactly right. See? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, people, get the facts straight before you call the show. All right, Tom, blow me up, please. There you go, Dre. 1-800-5800-TOM. Calvin's off the speakerphone now. Calvin. Good evening, Tom. Good evening. That First sounds time. a lot better. Thank you. Thank you. First time, long time. You, could, you couldn't hear me ask you to get off the speakerphone because you were on the speakerphone. My bad. I, I should have learned my phone <laughs> etiquette. That's my bad. That's okay. But I wanted to chime in today. Uh, thank you for the uh, elevated discussion and discourse that you have on your show. I, I really appreciate what you do on a, on a, on a daily basis here. Thank um, you. I, I really appreciate uh, Barack Obama and what he, what he stands for. I'm an educated brother myself, got a degree in chemical engineering, and the most important thing that Barack Obama has done is transcended race, bigotry, and everything else. Uh, to that Caribbean caller that was calling there earlier, that, that, that young, lady, young lady, she was uh, she was on point with a lot of things. I can resonate with her because I, too, served in the military. I was a veteran. You know, I'm still a veteran, uh, but I, I still serve my country today, and I, I work for the DOD. You know, the most important thing that Barack Obama has done is uh, he's given people a vision and a path for the future, similar to a JFK. Um, you know, the, the, the 15th Amendment dropped in 1870, and it took us this long to, to really... Um, transcend and, and get to the highest levels of leadership. And uh, I think that's the most critical and important thing uh, that, that we have to look forward to as, as a role model for all African Americans and all people in this country. You know, and I, I really appreciate you, you know, giving me this little, this little soapbox to stand on, so I was hoping you could take me out Shaquille O'Neal style. I certainly can, Calvin. Here it comes. Right now. Oh, that's not it. <laughs> We're just going to rifle through these. Amen. We had some layoffs here this week, so uh, we're still getting ourselves together. Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. Okay, everybody. Kobe, tell me how my ass tastes. There we go. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to, uh, wow, Chris on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, Professor, how you doing? I'm doing okay. Excellent to hear. Hey, first things first, in the spirit of uh, Better Late Than Never, thanks for the summer splash party. It was incredible, man. I had the time of my life. Oh, I'm glad you were there. Yeah, and uh, now on to my question. Um, as you know, only a select few of the uh, news media were able to announce to this nation and the world that the United States had elected its first black president, and I'm wondering... Where do you rank that accomplishment in your uh, long list of career accomplishments? Wow. Uh, you know, I've been on the air for many, many history-making events by now. And, um, you know, I, many of them were more violent and unhappy. Um, I was on the air for the rioting here in Los Angeles uh, after the, uh, uh, the, the Rodney King uh, trial had ended. And I was uh, on the air during riots in Miami. Uh, in the mid 80s before I came to uh, Los Angeles and um, I was on the air during rioting after the uh, the Lakers uh, won their uh, first of three championships in 2000 and I was on the air after 9/11 uh, you know after the events of 9/11 I was on the air beginning at 9:15 a.m uh, for almost the entire day mm -hmm. uh, so those were not they were history making and uh, you wanted to be on the air at those times but of all the events that I've covered that were historic, this was the happiest one of all, the most fun to report. For a change, it was not bad news. It was great news. Absolutely. And, yeah, you know, I'm not required to be at the radio station at night. Right. My show ends and I go home. To be able to be sitting here and, and to be on the air and to be able to report that kind of great history-making news... Uh, is something I'll always remember. When I uh, think back on my broadcasting career, I'll remember that night very fondly. And I was on the air a total of almost seven hours. Well, you know, Tom, I was on a 911 call when uh, I heard you announce it eight minutes or eight seconds after eight o'clock, and I'll never forget that either. And can you blow me up, brother? I certainly can. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM 1-800-5800-TOM 
800-866-866. The Tom Likas Show. It's the Tom Likas Show. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Wide open telephones on this Friday. Anything can happen here. And why not Mike on the Tom Likas Show? Hello. Hey, Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay, Mike. Tom, I'm a first-time listener. I actually just started listening to you this year. I have to say I love you. I think you're brilliant. Um, I'm a gay man calling from Orange County. And I'm calling in reference to uh, the recent election and just how disappointed I am personally um, at the African-American community. Um, and the reason I say that is because that I believe 70% of the vote, African-American vote, was actually to ban gay marriage. And I'm obviously speaking of Proposition, um, Proposition 8. And I just personally find it so appalling that this community, um, you know, and I, I love African Americans. I personally have many African American friends. I have cousins that are African American, so I'm not a racist person. Um, I just find it personally appalling that uh, this community, who knows what it feels like to be discriminated against, 70% would vote against my rights. And uh, I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. Um, it's troubling. Um, I did hear some complaining uh, from uh, black callers about TV commercials against Proposition 8 uh, that compared the struggle uh, for gay marriage and other gay and lesbian issues uh, to the civil rights struggles of the 60s. I saw that as well, and it's just so appalling. It's like, well, it's absolutely the same thing. And, you know, this kind of thinking is what they saw, we've, we've seen this before in the Holocaust. This is, you know, they, they try taking light rights away little by little from people, and just the fact that, you know, a group of people, because you may be religious, and I'm with you, by the way, on your views on religion, um, I'm personally Jewish, but I consider myself agnostic, I, I believe in everything and whatever, um, you're going to let religion tell you how to vote and use that as an excuse. I actually saw that in, on the news yesterday myself, uh, a black lady was saying, you know, this isn't a, a vote on discrimination. It's an ethical vote. And excuse me, don't tell me that it's ethical to vote against gay marriage. And it's just so appalling. And I personally think it's embarrassing for the entire community. Um, I think everybody should be horribly embarrassed um, that you, you were voted against yourself. You know, up until 1999, it was illegal in Utah for a black and white couple to get married, and most people don't realize that. They just lifted that, that ban in 1999, and it's just, I think it's horrible and appalling, and I think religion is to blame, personally. Well, religion was, let's face it, the majority of the votes uh, were, uh, the votes in favor of Proposition 8 uh, came from the money spent by the Mormon Church and the money spent by Mormons who were encouraged by the Mormon Church to contribute uh, to the Absolutely. Yes on Aid campaign. Absolutely. So uh, while uh, whatever percentage of, of the vote of African Americans uh, went in favor of Proposition 8, the bigger problem you have is that, uh, look, last night there were some protests in the streets here in Los oh, Angeles. Yes, and uh, you will recall that uh, a number of people went uh, out uh, to Santa Monica Boulevard to the Mormon Temple out there and yeah. protested there. Uh, that's exactly the right place to go because, let's face it, that is who was behind this. Absolutely. The church is, I mean, in my personal opinion, the church is behind a lot of the things that have gone wrong in our society. And if the church really, in my opinion, what the church and all major religions need to do is take a long, hard look in the mirror before you decide to point the picture, you know, the sorry, the point the finger at other people, you know, while it's not fair to single out the church, and I, I don't think it's just the church in this particular case, but the Mormon church actually contributed $20 million. You know, $20 million is a lot of money, and while, yeah, it was up to the voters, $20 million is a lot of money for advertising that has lies in it and this complete BS, and it's just so unfortunate. You know, there's so many other things, I think, plaguing society than other than, you know, if you don't like gay marriage, hey, don't have one. Uh, don't go to one. Right. And other, otherwise, what, what's the big deal? I mean, come on. There's other things to worry about than, than gay marriage in 2008 going into 2009. Well, as I have been telling everybody, the reason these issues come up in a year like this especially 
is because conservative Republicans don't have much good to report on here. No, they don't. They should be embarrassed. And Every so single one of them. the idea of this is to distract people from the real issues. The country is broke. The stock market's going in the crapper. The mm -hmm. dollar has been weak. Uh, people are unemployed now. About what Unemployment, what, up over 8% now for the first yep. time in 14 Eight. years? Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, of course, uh, the the Republican Party and the Republican conservative always will resort to flag burning and 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 homosexuality uh, mm -hmm. when they don't have any good news to report. Yeah, yeah, it's so insightful, Tom. You're absolutely right. And I just, you know, politics aside and everything aside, I just wish that if more people could think like you. You know, whatever your personal beliefs are on religion and all of that, if more people could just think. You know. Put the BS to the side and really look at the issues at hand and just take a look at what's going on in the world. We would not have the issues that we have today. And you're absolutely right. We, we, I guess we always need a scapegoat. But come on, let's take a look at what the real issues are. Get out of this war. Get out of whatever the hell we're doing right now is putting us in the state that we're in. And let's stop trying to blame the gay community. I mean, it's just, it's just so disgusting to me. I just moved here from Connecticut, um, you know, in March, and I am just so appalled. I moved to Huntington Beach, big mistake, by the way. Um, <laughs> and I'm just so appalled. <laughs> I, the stuff that I'm Didn't seeing, anyone tell you where Laguna was? What were you doing <laughs> in Huntington Beach? I know, I know. I should have gone to Laguna. And I moved on it. And you see these people. And Tom, oh, by the way, you'll get a kick out of this. I was working the, um, my boyfriend and I were working the polls on Election Day in Laguna Beach. I bet you were. Huh? <laughs> I bet I was indeed. <laughs> um, in uh, Laguna Beach. And the people that would come. For Proposition 8, you know, everyone was no on 8, obviously, over there, because they're all educated, and, you know, they're not walking around with the Bible. Um, but the people that were yes on 8, Tom, it was a guy, he was limping up the street, he had no teeth. I, I'm, not, I'm not making this up. Really? He had no teeth. Another one, you know, 80-year-old man, it's just so funny, and I think in five years this won't be an issue, and, you know... Five to ten years, this won't be an issue. Well, people... we can only hope. Hey, hang on a second, Mike. Jared, what did you want to say here to Mike? Uh, hello, Tom. Hi. Um, I, what I had to say to this guy was that, um, you know, I understood, you know, the, the gay person's perspective or whatever. And, you know, I personally voted, you know, no, you know, to give them a right. But as far as him blaming the, you know, the fact that the measure lost on black people or, you know, saying that, you know, that they were wrong or something, I think that they, that whoever was in charge of the gay propaganda, they screwed themselves. No, no. This, I, first of all, I did not say this because of the African American community. Absolutely not. I am well aware that there's many well versed African Americans out there. So please do not get that I was saying that for one second. But uh, I, what my, I'm sorry. The, the well, point what that I, I was saying, well, the point that I'm saying is that 70 percent of the African American vote went to ban. Okay, it went to remove the rights, eliminate the rights for same sex couples to marry. Okay. So any way you look at it, 70% of the African-American community voted to, to, to limit my rights. Now, if we left it up, you know, and the, and the argument the other side will use is, well, the people have spoken, so let's let, these, let's let the voters' choice go into effect. Well, I'm sorry. If we rewind 50 years from today and put it in the voters' hands on what rights African-Americans have, I, believe me when I say it would not be a favorable outcome. So when I am enraged that the African American has the audacity to vote 70 percent to eliminate my rights, I think I am correct. And I think that the African American community should take a long look, hard look in the mirror and think about why they're voting that way. It is, the it thing is really is, embarrassing. The thing is, though, is that what you have to realize is that people didn't people don't realize the rights that come along with marriage. Or if you, or if they do, they don't really think about it. When I said you guys screwed yourself when it came to propaganda, I was talking about the fact that you guys didn't bring to light, you know, things like uh, uh, benefits after death, you know, things like yeah. health benefits, things like that. You guys are just talking about, oh, we want to get married, we want to get married. Mm -hmm. If you guys bring it to, to them, like, you know, we want to get married, we want to get married, they look at it as like, you know, we want to drive us license you know we want to drink and stuff and yeah. you know stuff like that is a privilege and when you bring it to this table like that they say oh you know it's just a privilege we don't have to give it to you but
But if you start, if you were guys were to say, you know, we're talking, we're not talking about just being able to call each other husband and wife. We're talking about being able to, you know, being able to, you know, get uh, decide whether or not a partner lives or dies if, you know, they're in a coma or something like that. If you brought it to it that way, you guys might have won your prop, you know, you guys might have defeated Prop 8. But because you guys didn't bring it forth that way, you guys lost. And I, you know, and, uh, you know, I was trying to, I was trying to help you all out. You know, I was trying to you explain know, I, I kind of agree with know. you. I kind of, I see your side, and I personally, I'm kind of halfway agreeing with you. Um, I think that the rationale behind the way they took the campaign, the No on Eight campaign, is they put it in the realm of its discrimination because they felt that that would resonate best. And they felt specifically, I think, in the minority community, not, not just African Americans, specifically in the minority community, which we, you know, we have so much of in Los Angeles and m m uh, most of California, that that would resonate. But unfortunately, the propaganda by the church um, you know, if we're going to talk about propaganda, that's where, you know, the church and the Yes on A campaign, that was pure propaganda, talking about we're going to teach children about gay marriage, talking about we're going to take them to a gay wedding, you know, and all this, come on. And, you know, the last, the last day of the election on um, midnight, once it became November 4th, they put on a campaign and actually, you know, wrongfully had Barack Obama supporting the ban on gay marriage. It was just a dirty campaign, um, you know, and that's another conversation that I think is embarrassing for the Mormon church that they contributed $20 million to that. Um, but that's all. That's all I want. All right, Mike. Uh, Mike, Jared, thank you. 1-800-5800-TOM uh, is our telephone number. It's wide open telephones on this Friday. Tom Likas. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. <laughs> Mike is here with a reminder. Be careful what you wish for. I asked for shorter breaks. What a maroon. What a dope I was. Now I can't even take a leak anymore. Why didn't I think this out? Jesus. It's 1 800 5 800 Tom. That's our telephone number. We have a caller here apparently is lying about her age. So she's going to be much older than what she said. She claimed to be 42. She's probably 142. Let's see. Marilyn, you're on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello. I'm using my so, so why do you say that I'm lying about my age? <laughs> because you sound like you're 142 years old. Well, I'm sorry, dear. I'm not 142 years old. How old are anyway, you? Anyway, I just told you I was 42. What year were you born, darling? Oh, my gosh. This is this. Uh, this My is brother is forty-two years old. How? how what year this were you born? Why do you care what year I was born? Because you're lying about your. Just tell the truth. Tell us you're one hundred forty-two or eighty-seven okay, or whatever you are. I'm one hundred forty-two, honey. You do sound. You do sound like you're one hundred forty-two. I just want to know why you guys are saying things about the church when you know why what that this country was founded by the church. Honey. No, actually, it was not. That's England that was founded by a church. It certainly wasn't us. Oh, please. Then you wouldn't be here. You wouldn't be here, honey. If it was, if Darling, it was are you are you English. are you like one of these uh, jokesters, pranksters calling up here? Because no, I'm not a jokester and a prankster. But you you know the thing is, you guys are always talking about churches and about gay rights. How would you know stuff. if you weren't listening? You know what? I'll tell you something. Why are you All listening to us? Why aren't you listening to Christian radio? Why are you listening in to this show? God do we trust? I just want to let you know that. I uh, know. That doesn't That's mean a damn thing. She's hang up, you coward. You old bag, you shriveled up old prune. Unbelievable. Yes, this country was founded by the church. <laughs> by Father Christopher Columbus. Unbelievable. one 800 800 tom It's Carnell on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hello. Tom. Hello, Carnell. <laughs> long time listener, first time caller. Long time listener, first time caller. Hey, Dad, how's it going? <laughs> do you care? Oh, I most certainly do. I'm doing great. 
Excellent. See, that's what I love to hear. See, uh, first, let me, let me start off by saying that that um, we in the chocolate community, we like to say thank you so very much. Um, you have done a great service. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> um, I don't want to take up too much of your time because everyone is, they tune into the station and listen to you, not to me. I would just like to make a, a brief statement, if I may. Um, I would like to say something to the young lady who had called earlier um, that, that claimed that she was from the Caribbean. Um, this uh, stereotype that is perpetuated um, is not just by black people. Uh, when we talk about black people, it's kind of funny. The first thing that people will start thinking about is pan sagging, you know, and basketball and, and all these different things. That is not the case. You know, that is an urban thing. And, and, and by it being an urban thing, it's, it's all, that, that has all colors. It has white, it has black, it has brown, it has yellow. You know, uh, when you, when you go, well, I live in, I live in Anaheim. Then I don't know how many Ivy brothers that I see that is, that is having their pants all the way down to their ankles and tripping over their skateboards. You know what I mean? <laughs> I do. And so, you know, that's, that's, that's basically what I just wanted to make a point. Uh, ladies and gentlemen out there, please, we have a president that, is, that this is history. When, 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 when black people are saying that, oh, well, it's, 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 it's now our time, they're not, please, don't take it so personally. We're, we're not trying to say that, that it's just black people. We're talking about it's, all t it's our time for everyone. It's time for the change. It's time for all these the backdoor politics where where everyone you know uh, where a certain group of people were benefiting and the rest of us wasn't. So please, people, don't take it so seriously. You know what I mean? Let's just sit back, relax. Let's listen to Dad, and you know, let's go out there and let's handle our business and have some fun. You know what I mean? I yeah. love it. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to take up too much of your time, but if you can do me a favor, you can take me out, Bill O'Reilly style, followed by a hey, Tom Likas. Thank you. I certainly can. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Uh, F***ing thing sucks. Thank you, Bill. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Here's Casey on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hi, Tom. How are you? Doing great, Casey. Um, short term listener with the past within the past three months, first time caller. Cool. <laughs> um, I just wanted to weigh in on the issue of Proposition Eight. I'm thirty nine years old, I'm African American and I voted um against Proposition Eight. Um, I was raised in church and morally I believe in the union of man and woman due to my <laughs> Christian upbringing. But I have a daughter who is 16 years old and is very well, me and her are close, and sh and I knew a long time ago that my daughter was going to be gay. Okay? How did you know? Mannerisms, um, you know, you can see it on people. You can see it on people. She was a Missy Elliott fan? Is that how you could tell? Just like, you know, tom <laughs> tomboyish, no, just tomboyish, rough around the edges. My, my, um... Boyfriend says, no, nah, I don't think so. I think it's just because, you know, she she has older brothers who rough her up and everything else. She watched the WNBA All-Star game? Uh, <laughs> no, she's not really in the uh, basketball. <laughs> Jeez. But as she's gotten older, it's been more evident, and we've talked about it and everything. Big, and fan, big fan of Queen Fatifa? Huh? A big fan of Queen Fatifa? No, not a big fan of Queen Latifah, neither is she. No, Fatifa. Um, no. <laughs> I just check it. How, how can you tell if your daughter's gay? I just gave you some, some hints on how to tell. Well, like I said, she never wanted to wear dresses, just always rough, always fighting. I mean, um, I, I can't explain it. You you can see it on a person. You, can, uh -huh. you really can. Just the, their manner, mannerism, the way of dressing, um... I don't know. It's, it's hard to explain, but as she got older, it came out. Uh huh. She does like girls. She does have girlfriends. Uh huh. So my daughter is gay. So due to the fact that I have a child that is gay, 
I voted no on Proposition 8 because I want her to have rights just like everybody else, even though morally, <laughs> I, like I said, I believe in the union of You always wanted to go to your daughter's wedding. That's why you voted no on 8. You said what? I said you always want to go to your daughter's wedding. That's why you voted uh, no on 8. No, no, I want my daughter to be happy. There's, oh, okay. no, there's no guarantee that she will ever get married. That's right. You know, and who's to say that she will remain um, interested in females? Like, when I talk to her about it, she just says, Mom, just let me live for today. She's very mature for her age, and don't worry about it. And how do you explain this down at the church? I don't have to explain it to nobody. Oh, the people, have, the people know your daughter a, down there? Huh? People know your daughter down there? Um, actually, I'm not as, uh, I don't go to church as much as I did when I was younger, because I was forced to go to church when I was younger. <laughs> you know, both grandparents, you know, one was Baptist, one was Pentecostal. I didn't have a choice. So as I've gotten older, I don't step inside the church as often. I see. I, you know, I need to. Mm. Especially with this RDIF chip about to get loose. What? What does that have to do with it? Uh, this mark of the beast, the 666. What? I mean, <laughs> Come <laughs> on. Off the subject. Come is on. What? You don't She's talking, that. by the way, 666. She's talking to Thomas Joseph Lycus here. <laughs> and so what are you saying? You're, you're a child of Satan? or you, I don't know. I doubt it. I don't know. I, I doubt it. It's checking. <laughs> you would know. No, I don't know. You know, uh, I don't know, but I've been looking at a lot of different things. Um, and the RDIS is really scary. <laughs> I understand. The, <laughs> so you're afraid that Walmart's already using those chips. Yeah, I'm afraid of that. So do, you, do you not shop at Walmart? Um, not as much as I used to every now and then. Because you're afraid of the mark of the beast. Heck yeah. Wow. Who, 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 who wouldn't be, unless you, you Me? know... I'm not afraid of it. Why not? Are you atheist? Yes. Uh, well, God bless your soul. I'm a you very know. happy camper. Okay, that's, that's okay. If you're comfortable with it, you know. I that's am. Fine. I'm not. <laughs> mm. I'm very yeah. concerned about it. Really? Yeah. And so, you, so now you only go to Walmart well, when absolutely necessary? Well, I didn't know anything about Walmart already using the RDIF chip. In what form? I see. And uh, who was it that told you that uh, the RDIF chip is the mark of the beast? Um, it's not necessarily the mark of the beast, but it's a way to implement um, that whole concept of the mark of the beast as far as putting it on the universal ID cards. The universal and, ID cards. And then being able to shut off the our universal ID card and make you to where you can't get your funds, your money, you can't buy groceries, you can't bank, you know, it has all plan. your medical information on it. It's a, it's a form of control. You must listen to AM radio a lot. No, this is just um, some things off the Internet, not really so much listening oh, to it. Okay. Thought I would check. All right, well, uh, Casey, uh, you are uh, complex and fascinating, and I feel like uh, the skins peel off like an onion. I could just go all day, but... Well, I really can't go all day. Tom, Tom, Tom. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. The Tom Likas Show. This is my From Hollywood, it's the Tom Likas Show. I'm your host, Tom Likas. Right. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Anything goes here. Anything at all. As we slide into the weekend. Let's say hello here to Mike on the Tom Likas Show. Tom, you're awesome. I'm going to get to the point and be quick. I didn't take your advice here a few years ago in the past. And I got with a girl and we had joint accounts and joint credit cards. <laughs> and big mistake, I know. Um, do you know what happened? The inevitable happened, and it did. I had to claim bankruptcy, went through that whole procedure and process, and got that done. I finally went and pulled up my credit report, and it wasn't as bad as I thought, so I said, okay, I need to start rebuilding credit, and I need to get a hold of a credit card. I got to the point where I didn't even need an unsecured credit card. I got 
I need a, didn't need a secured credit card. I needed an unsec- I got an unsecured credit card. Got that, and I was approved. What's the best way to go about building my credit? I want to get up to an 800 from a 650 in the next year. Pay, I, pay, scrupulously I, pay all your bills on time or early. My credit to debt ratio is zero right now. Well, you're going to use your credit card a little bit. Okay. And then pay it in full every month. Pay it full, so don't leave any balance to roll over right. in the next month because it's zero percent interest for the first year. Well, then you can, I guess you can let it roll as long as you at the end, because when they say zero percent interest for the first year, I think if you're one second late at the end of the year, they will charge you the interest from the entire previous year. Okay, so you think I should just use a little bit as what I would use for cash? Yes. And pay it off at the end of the month or all of it and just keep doing that. Keep to build doing it. Just keep doing it. Don't build up any new debts. Excellent. Thank you, Father. Have a good weekend, and you're awesome. Mike, thank you. By the way, compliments to Mike. He didn't tell us how long he's been out here. I thought for sure we were going to get that. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Lola on the Tom Likas show. Hello. Hello, Tom. Hello, Lola. How are you? Do you care? Of course I care, love. I'm doing great. Wonderful. Um, I was, when I was listening on the break to uh, Casey, she's so top right on top of what I was going to call you about, but I mean, she's crazy. But the mark of the beast threw me over the edge. I was like, are these people really believing this bullets is out there? That it's the mark of the beast. And that goes into what I was going to call you about originally, which was I have really uh, right-wing parents who, I mean, they're just, I mean, off their rocker. Right really? Wing. Wow. Oh, yeah. Don't believe in, in gay marriage, the whole nine, the religious, the whole thing. And for some, how I have a sister that's five years older than myself, and... I, she had followed in their steps, and I can't tell you, when I was young, we were raised in the church, and as soon as I was old enough to make my own decisions, I went, was screaming in the other direction. So I, I was having a discussion with my sister about uh, Prop 8 and about uh, Obama and stuff like that, and I'm telling you, I, I think, just like Casey, it's like it's all making sense to me. These people are all out of their bloody heads. <laughs> It's the mark of the beast. It's Obama. It's the said, and then the guy that said he's the wolf in sheep's clothing. He's the. I didn't know if he was serious or not. I mean, this, this show it carries me through traffic, and I was rolling, Tom. I'm like, please tell me this is not for real. It's got to be a guy that's practicing on his comedy routine. Just remember, these are the people who have 45 minutes to hold on to talk to me. It is so true, Tom. And I'm like. I mean, I was fine holding on, no problem. I'm sitting in traffic. What better have I got to do? Listen to you and wait on hold. It's fine. But, I mean, I, I'm listening to bloody crazy people. <laughs> it, it just does not make any sense to me. There is... I, I'm with you. I'm, I'm not afraid of a number, ever, at all. I'm not afraid of some little man with a stick and a pointy tail coming to me and saying, oh, I'm going to take you to bloody hell and we're going to rot down there forever. And who is Casey to damn you and say, oh, God bless your soul? God oh, bless your soul. Bless her. Like, what are you talking about? And they're all bloody nuts, Tom. All of them. So I'm with you. I'm in your camp. And if we're going to rot in hell, then I'll rot there with you and we'll laugh our bellies the whole time. We're going to have the best talk show ever in hell. The best talk show ever. And I'll listen every day, love. Every day. I love it. Love you. Thank you, Lola. Blow me up, Tom. Here you go. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. Let's say hi to Scott on the Tom Like His Show. Hello. Hey, how's it going? It's going great. Well, um, yeah, I always thought those uh, scanners at Walmart were to help, like inventory, and uh, you, you know, had... help get you through the line quicker. It's the huh? mark of the beast. I guess I'm a, I guess I'm a moron, but uh, <laughs> I, I just had a question. Um, it's, you, you're pretty smart. I really respect what you think in the business sense. Um, I've been a um, a sales representative. We do um, for security, fire alarm, bird cameras, all that kind of stuff. And uh, uh, they're going to do some pretty radical changes coming up here at the beginning of the year, kind of restructuring it. And I got to offer 
to do uh, a stable one. I, I've made up around 100 when I've had a good year a year or two ago, but I've got a stable offer at 60, which is salaried with some commissions. And uh, I wanted to get your take on what, what would you lean towards, knowing how everything's going and coming up. I am a, and I, by the way, I, I put my money where my mouth is. I'm a big proponent of guaranteed money right okay. now because, uh, you know, first of all, commission is uh, uh, premised on you selling stuff uh, in an environment with over 8% unemployment. Uh, and we're teetering on a recession. Um, the economy right now uh, is is all over the road, and the uh, um, uh, stock market is all over the road. And uh, there are many businesses just simply going out of business uh, here in Southern California. Mervyn's Shoe Pavilion. Uh, of course, we've uh, seen uh, uh, Circuit City now is going to close a bunch of stores here in California. Exactly. I mean, yeah. if you've got guaranteed money, Sure, you're limited to how much you can make by by the amount that's guaranteed, but who knows how much you're going to make on commission selling in this environment? Well, and what I'm thinking too is I'm sure you're aware of it. When they when I get paid, I, I'm commission only, and I've done pretty well on it. But when you get paid, they tax you up at that rate like a time and a half or double time, like when you're uh, you know as a specialty as like a fringe benefit rate, which is extremely high. Um, the salaried rate, I, I do believe that they would be taxing me more in an appropriate uh, manner, you know, uh, check to check. Yeah. I think, uh, yeah, I, right now, um, I, <laughs> I don't have a lot of faith in the economy right now. So if I were you, I would hunker down, take the guaranteed money, and wait for the economy to improve. Well, Tom, you're the best. That's what I call for. Could you uh, do me up at O'Reilly with a gunshot and a snoop? All right, let's see if we can put that together here, Scott. Thanks a lot for the call. I can't do it. Okay. We'll do it live. Okay. We'll, no. we'll do it live. F it. Do it live. I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live. Right. F***ing thing sucks. And Snoop. Bitch. There it is. Very nice. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You can always hear our show streaming live by going to BlowMeUpTom.com. Click on the Listen Live button and you'll be listening live. The Tom Likas Show.